Hey, what's up, guys? It's your host, Tiger Eye Cosplay, and you're watching Nerdosity. Hey, what's up, Nerdosity? This is your host, Tiger Eye Cosplay, coming at you. And today, we have, guess what? You see the shirt, you see the hat, oh, you know what's coming. Top list of Nerdosity, that's right. We got another one of those coming up. And this time, it is a top 10 list, and it is the top 10 unconventional superhero movies. We, I'm excited for this one because I love superhero movies and they awesome But when they go off the rails and they do some crazy stuff These people know what they're doing and they're really good. So these are my top 10 unconventional superhero movies But you know, we got to look at the rules. So let's do that right now To it with number 10, which is Jumper. Now, Jumper is a 2008 American science fiction film based on a guy named David Rice who can teleport. And he's running from a secret society cult thing that's run by this dude named Roland who is trying to kill him because they think that he's a threat to humanity or just something that should, an abomination pretty much. So it shouldn't be alive, so they gotta kill him. So it's unconventional because David Rice doesn't really act like a hero until he is faced with the decision of saving people. And that happens at the, at the end. And in the beginning, the whole entire plot of the movie just watches him realize his powers, realize that people are hunting him, and then finally he's put into a hero situation. So mostly he's kind of like an anti-hero because he's doing a lot of the jumping for himself. Well, he's doing all of the jumping for himself, really. Until he gets it in his thick head that other people are around, you know? So it's really a coming into yourself superhero moment instead of an actual superhero moment. You know when Spider-Man gets his Uncle Ben moment? Well, he doesn't get his Uncle Ben moment until the last 10 minutes of the film. Did you think you were the only one? You really have no idea, dude. Just jump all over the place. Jump, 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 jump. And nothing's gonna happen, but they've noticed. Bam. Down there. Hello, boys. All right, now we go on to number nine, which is Deadpool. Deadpool is a 2016 American superhero film. That's about this dude named Wade Wilson who gets transformed into Deadpool, a mutant with mutant abilities that leaves him physically, really physically scarred and mentally unstable by this other dude that I can't remember his name. And the whole plot of the film follows Deadpool while he's trying to track down and kill the dude that did this to him because he also lost his girl in the process due to thinking he was gonna die and then he got super disfigured. It's not even conventional because opposed to regular heroes who don't kill anybody, Deadpool kills a lot of people. And plus, he uses a lot of language, which most heroes don't use. Um, and when I mean a lot of language, I mean a lot of language. And he's super just raunchy. And not a lot of hero, not pretty much no hero is really. He's an anti-hero. That's what it says on his card or whatever. And plus it's rated R. <laughs> you're, you're about to be killed by a Zamboni. Now we go to number eight, which is Dark Tower. Now Dark Tower is a 2017 dark fantasy Western film. I'll say that 10 times fast about a guy named Roland Deshawn, who was the last gunslinger, and his quest to kill Walter Odim, AKA the Man in Black, who is trying to destroy the Dark Tower that holds the whole universe really together. It's like the center point. So if the Dark Tower goes down, then everybody dies sort of thing. So he's trying to kill him. And this kid named Jake Chambers has an ability called the shine, which a lot of kids have, but his shine is immense. And Walter is collecting kids with a shine to take down the Dark Tower, but Jake Chambers' shine is so big that he could take down the Dark Tower himself. So Jake is trying to save himself from Walter while helping Roland defeat Walter. So it's like an it's like a collision of the ultimate good and evil sort of thing. Now it's unconventional because the superheroes, Jake and Roland per se, aren't really superheroes. They just have innate abilities or things that they can do. Like, Roland has guns. He's really good at gunslinging because he's done it all his life. And Jake, all he has is the shine, 
which works against him, not for him. And the only person who's really super is Walter, and so he's a super villain while the other superheroes are just kind of heroes. But they are super in a way that their gunsling that the gunslinger's gunslinging seems insane. And Jake's shine is a superpower because he is able to defeat War Walter with it or help defeat Walter with it. So it's unconventional in that way. You have nothing to be afraid of, my friend. Death is not far away. Don't let him get in your head. Guns. Now we go to number seven, which is Big Hero 6. Now, Big Hero 6 is a 2014 American superhero animated film about a robotics prodigy named Hero and his brother Tadashi, who lives in the city of San Francisco. And Tadashi creates this robot named Baymax, who is supposed to be a health companion. But after Tadashi dies in an accident, Hero has to overcome everything that happens because of his death to defeat a guy that stole his tech and he does some bad things. So, with the help of Tadashi's old friends, like Gogo, Honey, Lemon, Wasabi, Fred, and Baymax, Hero transforms them into a high-tech group of heroes to help take down this dude. So it's unconventional because nobody really has superpowers per se. It's all just high-tech stuff. Even the bad guy, he's just high-tech. So they call, they're they called to arms. Nobody really knows that this stuff is going on. Like the bad guy isn't prevalent until the end of the story. Like nobody really knows if that's the bad guy. It's only a bad guy to the six that's there. So they're high-tech and they're fighting someone that none of the, really, none of the public really knows about. And so they're just really high-tech vigilantes. Is this gonna take long? Relax, you big baby. We'll be in and out. Anyway, you've never seen my lab. Oh, great. I get to see your nerd lab. <laughs> now we go to number six, which is The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Now this movie, also known as just Shark Boy and Lava Girl, is a 2005 American adventure film about this kid named Max who goes into fantasies and dreams up worlds to make his life more sane for him. Like, it's sort of like a getting away from things. But when these fantasies that he has collides with his real world due to bullies bullying him, he has to find a way to save his fantasy world, which is named Drool, I believe, and also save his real world. But his superheroes that he dreamed up was a boy named Shark Boy and a girl named Lava Girl. And they help Max destroy the bad people in the fake and real world. It's unconventional because all of the superheroes and all of the super stuff in this movie is all dreamt up by Max. It's not actually real. Shark Boy and Lava Girl are really awesome superheroes, but they're not real. And all of the super villains, they're not real. They're based on people in his life and it's a way to cope so that he's the hero in his own story. So it's just a way to cope. Dream, 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 dream. Your turn. Hit the hay, fast asleep, dream a dreamy little bleep. Dream, 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 dream. It's working! Keep it up, Shark Boy! Now we go to number five, which is Underdog. Underdog is a 2007 American superhero film about a lemon beagle who can't sniff bombs, gets thrown out, but because a lab accident before he got thrown out gave him extraordinary powers that he didn't know about before, and these extraordinary powers include the ability to speak. So Underdog names himself the protector of Capital City and goes around protecting all of the citizens from bad guys. And with the help of his owners, the Ungers, who also name him Shoe Shine, he gets a superhero outfit and he gets to defeat the evil mad scientist Simon Bar Sinister and his henchman called Cad Lackey from doing some awful and unspeakable things to Capital City. But it's unconventional because the superhero is a, is a dog. It's crazy because usually when we think superheroes, we think people. But in this film, Underdog is a dog. The world needs a hero. And man needs 
needs a best friend. I'm not really a cat person. Woof. Now we go to number four, which is Hancock. Now Hancock is a 2008 American superhero comedy drama film where this scruffy superhero named Hancock protects the citizens of Los Angeles, but doesn't do it very gracefully. Like he tears up the place whenever he saves people. Like he costs the city millions of dollars every single time he tries to save them because he's usually drunk or he doesn't care. He just doesn't care what people think either. He's very much likely to be found dozing off on a park bench when there's danger or actually helping the danger. Like he just doesn't care because nobody really likes him and he doesn't really know how to do this stuff. That's until one day when he saves a PR agent and the PR agent wants to help him get better PR because he has a superhero, he can't save people, but he just doesn't know how to do it gracefully. So this PR agent puts him through the ropes and helps him do it so that his image is saved. And he and Hancock realizes that he has a soft side and he actually wants to help the people, but he just doesn't know how without screwing everything up. Now I'd say it's unconventional because a superhero has a very lackadaisical I wonder if that's read the word. He doesn't really, he has an apathetic look on superheroing at first until he gets this regular dude who doesn't know anything about superheroes to help him become a better superhero. You never really see a soup, like whenever you have a superhero being trained, it's usually by another superhero, but this dude is just a PR agent. He's just a regular dude showing him how to do his stuff. <laughs> animated film about this alien named Megamind. He's blue, has a huge head, you know him. He and Metro Man come from two planets that get destroyed. Metro Man ends up becoming the superhero because of his good looks and his charming ways and his superhero-esque powers and stuff. And Megamind becomes the supervillain because of his genius intellect and his knack for making things that are seen as evil. But he's not really evil. So when Metro Man decides that he doesn't want to do this whole superhero thing anymore and decides to fake his death, Megamind realizes that he's bored now and he doesn't really have anyone to fight anymore and he doesn't have any purpose to life, so he makes a superhero of his own. When things go south, Megamind has to choose between evil or being good and realizes that he's better off being good. So it's unconventional because this because the villain turns out to be the superhero. Megamind wasn't really evil. He just it was pretty much just high tech pranks. You know what I mean? Eventually he turned good when push came to shove. He just turned bad because people were bullying him and he didn't know what else to do. Like you can't fault the dude for that. And plus the hero who was supposed to be a hero decided that he didn't want to be a hero just because it was boring. This glass has ice cubes in it. Yes, that's what happens when water gets cold. No, what I'm saying is, don't you think it's a little odd that the ice hasn't melted yet? One of life's great mysteries. Hey. Now we go to number two, which is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I know y'all are gonna come at me saying, why is it Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse number one? And well, you'll see it, okay? Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is a 2018 American superhero film about a kid named Miles Morales who um, becomes Spider-Man after his Spider-Man and his world died. And when Kingpin decides to make a super collider that brings in all kinds of different universes together, all kinds of Spider-Mans pop out of this and they have to figure out a way to defeat Kingpin and also get back to their world before they all die. It's unconventional because it brings several of the same superheroes into the same universe. Usually it's just one superhero in one universe that you look at, but no, it brought in all of them to one location and actually did it really, really well. And plus the animation style and the art style and how they went about things all look 
looked like a comic book. They even um, filmed things in twos, which means that each two frames are the same frame, so it has more of a, a feel of the comic book, which was really, really neat. But the reason why I didn't put it as number one is because, you know, it's that, it is still a classic superhero movie. He gets bit by the spider, great power comes great responsibility. He has to save everybody in the world and stuff, common enemy. It's a classic superhero movie because it's classic superhero. Spider-Man, Stan Lee, classic man, classic. Wow, is it too crazy? No, man. Miles, I see exactly what you're doing there, man. Yeah. You know me and your dad used to do this back in the day. Stop lying. It's true. Then he took on the cop thing, and I don't know. He's a good guy, just, you know what I'm saying. And before we get on to number one, I have just a few honorable mentions for you. So let's get into that right now. What's going on? What the hell are you doing here? Y'all gonna play good cop, bad cop? Nah, Daniels. Bad cop, robocop. <laughs> I've recovered 26 guns from Valen's warehouse. You know what they do to cops in prison, man? Being locked up with the same dudes you put in there? How do you think before he gives you up? If we don't make it back, bring the mutagen to Splinter. It can save his life. Sachs laboratory is on the 36th floor. I've already disabled the security system. Oh, and uh, good luck. If I don't return, remember me, April. You can always find me. In here. Can I count on you to help me repair my spaceship? Why me? Because I like the way you think. Your equations rather interest me. In fact, they're really not bad at all for a human. You're serious? I'm serious. Telling me the truth? The truth. You really are from outer space? I am from outer space. Even though you're a cat? Frank, is it a deal? How developed does your brain have to be to use that collar? Not very. In fact, you could handle it. You want to try? Look, just, just grab hold of it. Easy, don't take it off. I mean, without that collar, I'm just an average cat. Right, right. Okay, now that you're back, the moment you have all been waiting for, number one is The Incredibles. Yes, we have come full circle. Finally, my boy is at the top. The Incredibles is a 2004 American superhero film about superheroes who get outlawed by the world because they quote unquote do more harm than good. And that all of this superheroing is against people's wishes and whatnot because they didn't ask to be saved or whatever. So we follow the life of two superheroes in particular, Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl who marry and become known as Bob and Helen Parr. So they have kids and they try to go about their normal life. But when Mr. Incredible, or Bob, decides that his normal life just isn't cutting it for him anymore. He wants to do something greater because he still has the hero inside of him. So Mr. Incredible, Bob Hart, goes behind his family's back and when he's summoned to an island called Nomanasan and he's able to fight bad guys there, he feels like he's actually accomplishing something again. But something so good to be true is so good to be true. And he gets in trouble and it's up to his family to save him and it's up to the family to save the city from a huge threat. This is unconventional because even though it is a classic superhero film where there's superheroes and stuff, but it's not about the superheroing. It's about the family. Like we see that they're superheroes. Yeah, 
But we also see that they're regular people just like us, that they have to go through things. Like uh, racism, per se, because I would say that a superhero is race. That they're shunned from society, they have to hide who they are just because they're different and because people don't understand that sometimes big villains come with big consequences that they have to take. And also that they have kids and they have to raise their kids in a way that they'll be good kids and also superheroes, but also because they can't really show that they're superheroes. So like, we're following a family who has real world problems that they can't just fix because they're superheroes. They're just like us. It's less of an unattainable life on, on TV. It's just like real life. They get around it because they know that together they can do way more than against each other. It's just so amazingly cool that we can have a superhero film be so amazing and so into it and that you're into it and have all kinds of fight scenes and cool things, but also realize that the underlying moral of this story is that family is forever. If you just keep on doing what you believe in, that you can move mountains, just being yourself and being who you're meant to be. It is an amazing and empowering story that is so obtainable. And you don't get a lot of obtainable things with superhero films. And that's why I put it as number one. watching. Oof, I am so glad that we got the superheroes finally on this channel because I love them, man. I love them. The mythic struggle is great. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you give this a big thumbs up if you liked it. And also make sure you comment below telling me what you think your, what your favorite unconventional superhero film is. Plus you'll see some pictures popping up of, of some awesome Instagram commenters who decided to tell me what their favorite superhero film was. Thank you guys so much. If you want to be on the next video that I do, make sure that you mosey on over to my Instagram, which is Tiger Eye Cosplay, and you answer the questions that I put up, and you'll be on the next video, I promise you that. But also, make sure you subscribe, because I make new videos every Wednesday and Friday. So thank you guys so much for watching. You've been watching Nerdocity, and I will see you next time.